alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a brief introduction of how our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to pray. And this is collected and taken from the authentic sunnah. And this is extremely important because it was he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, pray as you have seen me pray. I haven't seen you pray, O Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but I have read the description of your prayer from your companions. And the hadiths that came to us are found in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Sunan Abi Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Al Nasa'i, in Al Mustadrak, in Musnad Imam Ahmad, Mutta Imam Malik, so many books of hadith. You collect them, you check their authenticity, and then you implement it in your prayers. Now, the issue of prayer is important because it is one of the pillars of Islam. Not only that, it is a vast and huge topic because like any forms of worship, it has conditions. It has things that nullify it. It has pillars. It has mandatory acts and it has sunnah acts. And without the knowledge of all of these things, your prayer would not be complete. And this is the cause where a lot of the Muslims have dispute, argument. They have hatred and enmity towards one another, simply because you're not praying like I'm praying, simply because I follow a school different than your school. And this is totally wrong. Salat was made to gather people together. This is why we have congregational prayer. This is why when the Prophet ﷺ used to straighten the rows of the worshippers, he used to say to them, do not differ, do not go against one another, so that Allah Azza wa Jal would not differ your hearts. And this is what we're having at the moment. So this is a brief description. I don't claim that it is the perfect description, but at least sharing with you that I know would insha'Allah elevate the level of our prayers to the level we want. Bi'ithnillahi azza wa jal. So first of all, there are conditions. And these conditions must be fulfilled. And the definition of condition according to the jurors is that a thing without it, the form of worship does not exist. And if it is found and fulfilled, that is the condition, this doesn't mean that it has to be found. What does this mean, Sheikh? I'm confused. I'll, I'll give you an example. Don't worry. One of the conditions of Salat is wudu, ablution. So if I pray without ablution, my prayer is void, simple as that, because the condition was not fulfilled. But if I make ablution, this does not mean I have to pray. I may pray and I may, I may not pray. So when the condition is there, it doesn't mean that I have to perform the form of worship. But if it is not fulfilled, if it's not there, this means that even if I perform the worship, the form of worship, it is invalid. So what are the conditions of Salat? There are many. Among them is, first of all, niyyah or intention. And the intention, some make it as a condition because it comes before the prayer, and some make it as a pillar. And it's more likely to be a condition. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to intend it. And I will not go into the conditions of Salat because this is a long topic. But I have to know whether I'm praying Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha or Fajr. I just can't say Allahu Akbar and during the prayer say, hmm, what is this? Oh, I think it's Witr. No, this is not valid. 
Second condition, facing the Qibla. So if I know the direction of Kaaba, I have to direct myself to it. If I know it's there and I direct myself this way, then my prayer is invalid. Third uh, uh, condition is the entrance of the time of prayer. So I want to pray Maghrib, and I can see the sun is about to set, or half of it is, has disappeared, and I say, Allahu Akbar, your prayer is invalid. Why? Because the sun has to completely set and disappear for Maghrib to be due, and you can't pray before the time is due. Condition number four, to cover your awrah. So for a man, I have to cover from the navel to the knees. This is my awrah. This is the private part that must not be shown. Without it, my prayer is invalid. Number five is to have purity. And purity is divided into two types. Wudu, which is uplifting the status of impurity. Or ghusl, which is uplifting the major state of impurity, the ritual impurity. This is number one. Wudu or ghusl. Number two, purity of my body. No najasa, no impurities on it. Purity of my clothes and purity of the spot that I'm praying on. Three, th three types. These are the conditions. You can look for more details in the books of fiqh. But this is something you have to understand and know. Without it, your prayer is invalid. So be careful. We come to the prayer. I want to pray now. What do I do? I fulfill the conditions. Okay, my awrah is covered. I have wudu. I'm facing the qibla. The time is due for prayer. So what do I do? I intend. And how do I intend? Intention is in the heart. It's not something that you verbally say. So if I want to eat an apple, I don't say I intend to eat this green apple in front of me on the table. I just reach out and bite it. This is the intention. So my intention now, in my heart, I don't have to say anything verbally or mentally. I just intend to pray dhuhr. It is dhuhr time. I make wudu, I come and I stand. The intention is there. I begin my prayer with a pillar. What is this pillar? You tell me. Wrong answer. The pillar, first pillar of Salat is not takbir. The first pillar of Salat is standing up when you're able to do so. So for fard prayers, you don't have the option of sitting down because you're lazy or you feel tired. If you're able to stand up, it's a pillar that you stand up. This is pillar number one. I'm standing up. I do pillar number two, which is known as takbiratul ihram. The first inauguration takbir. By saying, Allahu Akbar. So now... I have started prayer. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, wa tahrimuha at takbir. So it has to be inaugurated with takbir, the first takbir. Okay, Sheikh, you said Allahu Akbar, you didn't raise your hands. Yes, raising the hands is not a pillar. This is a sunnah. Whoa, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. This is why I'm here. So saying Allahu Akbar means that I've started praying. Now, the sunnah is to say Allahu Akbar, to raise the hands. If I don't raise the hands, sunnah is gone. The prayer is totally valid and correct. Okay, when to raise the hands, Shaykh? You have one of three. Either before saying Allahu Akbar, or during it, or after it. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It can be 
raised before, during, or after. This is confirmed sunnah of the Prophet So, we move on. When I say Allahu Akbar, raise my hands, the sunnah is to put the right hand over the left hand on the chest as per the hadith of Wa'il ibn Hujr, may Allah be pleased with him. And this was a confirmed sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, to, to place the right hand over the left on the chest. Well, the chest itself is an issue of dispute because some authenticate the hadith, some don't. And those who don't differ whether to put it on the belly or to put it underneath the belly. But the most authentic is to put it on the chest. It's from here to here. So you put the right hand on the left hand on this chest while in the standing position. Underline, highlight with yellow, bold font. Why? I'll come to discuss this with you because the hadith when describing the Prophet's prayer والسلام, they used to say that he used to put the right on the left hand in the standing position. So now I'm standing. Let's begin from scratch. You look at the place of your prostration. You don't look at the chandeliers and look at the people around you. Everything is fine. No, 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 no. You're praying. Look here. Look there. I asked Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, upon looking hither and thither in prayer. He replied, It is a way of stealing by which Satan takes away a portion from the prayer of a person. Sahir al Pukhari narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, What is wrong with those people who look towards the sky during the prayer? His talk grew stern while delivering this speech, and he said they should stop looking towards the sky during the prayer. Otherwise, their eyesight would be taken away. Narrated by Sahih al Pukhari. You are facing Allah Azza wa Jal. So you stand in submissiveness and humility, expressing your poverty, and you say, Allahu Akbar. Where do I raise my hands? Two hadiths. One next to the shoulders, one next to the ears. So, how do I understand this? It's very easy. The palm is next to your shoulders. The fingers are next to the level of your ears. And this is how you combine between the two authentic hadiths. So it is not like Allahu Akbar as people say or Allahu Akbar as people do. This is all wrong. It is not Allahu Akbar. No, it is this way. So the palms next to the shoulders, the fingers are next to the level of the ears facing the Qibla. You say Allahu Akbar, looking at the place of your prostration. Where do I put my forehead? I look at it whenever I am in the standing position. So it's always like this. Then I place my right hand over the left hand on the chest. And there are two ways of doing this. Look at my fingers. This is my wrist, my palm, and my arm. It's in between, like this. So this is one way of doing it. The other way, which is also authentic of doing it, is grabbing my wrist, like this. So I'm grabbing it. Some people want to make something in between, so they do this. And this is wrong. Either you put the whole palm of your hand with the fingers on the arm, wrist, and hand, or you simply grab your wrist, left wrist, like this. <laughs> 